بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد We continue on our readings in Kitab al-Siyam Kitab al-Siyam from the book Bulug al-Maram in Adilat al-Ahkam The Ibn al-Hajj al-Asqalani rahimahu Allah ta'ala Explained by Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymin rahimahu Allah ta'ala We are in the Hadith or the Hadith in which Ibn Hajar rahimahullah ta'ala under the title heading Hukmu Tathbeet al Niyati fi Siyam. Hukmu Tathbeet al Niyya fi Siyam. The ruling with regards to affirming and establishing the intention for as Siyam, for fasting. And this is the Hadith that we've been discussing. We, finish, we will finish inshallah ta'ala tonight from the fawaid of this Hadith. <coughs> بِإِذْنِ And that is the hadith عَنْ حَفْسَةَ أُمِّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ رضي الله عنها أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من لم يبيت الصيام قبل الفجر فلا صيام له من لم يبيت الصيام قبل الفجر فلا صيام له This hadith on the story of Hafsa زوجة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أم المؤمنين رضي الله تعالى عنها the mother of the believers, she said that the, that the Prophet wasallam said, whoever does not make his intention, as we, as we spoke about last night, the meaning of this, niyatu siyam, man lam yubayyit bima'na yani niyatu siyam, whoever does not spend the night, literally, with an intention to fast before fajr, Meaning that the intention must be made before Fajr and as the Shaykhi mentioned in our class last night, even if it is at the last part of the night, right before Fajr, right? Because we discussed what, Faisal? We discussed um, in the Right? Actions are based on based based upon intentions. And what is one of the actions that can be done? Qabl al Fajr, Qabl al Tulu al Shams. That is an indication that you intend to fast. What is the action? The, the eating of the suhoor. The eating of the suhoor or the sahur? Which one? Sahur is what you eat. And suhoor is the action. Barakallahu feekum. Now, taking this sahur and performing the action of suhoor. Tayyip. So he says, whoever does not do this, then there is no fast for him. Of course, the la here, la and nafiyah lil jins. Meaning, it negates the khabar. It negates that which, Allah, that which the Prophet ﷺ is informing us about in here with regards to the correctness or the validity of one's fast has been negated. Has been negated if he does not have intention. From the benefits of this hadith, as we have discussed, some of the benefits is whoever does not make the intention to fast before Fajr, we discuss that this means, of course, Fajr al-Sadiq, the true Fajr, and not the Fajr al-Kadhib, the false dawn. Also, from the benefits of this hadith, from the statement of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man lam yubayyit al-siyam, whoever does not have the intention before Fajr, during the night, to make siyam, zahiruhu al-umum, siyam fard, wa siyam al-nafal. From the apparent wording of this hadith is that it includes, it is inclusive of the fast that is an obligation, like Ramadan, and the fast that is an optional fast. وَقَوْلُهُ فَلَا صِيَامَ لَهُ أَيْ لَا صِيَامُ الصَّحِيحٌ وَلَا صِيَامَ الصَّحِيحٌ لَهُ Meaning there's a, his fast is not a valid fast. His fast is not a valid fast. The Shaykh he says, وَوَجْهُ ذَلِكْ أَنَّ الصَّوْمَ لَبْدَ أَنْ يَشْتَمِلَ عَلَى جَمِيعِ النَّهَارِ The Shaykh he says, why? Because it is a must that the siyam or the saum, it must be a fast that includes all is done throughout the entire day. Throughout the entire day. Listen what the Shaykh he says. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَنْوِ إِلَّا بَعْدَ تُلُوءِ الْفَجْرِ وَلَوْ بِجُزْءٍ يَسِيرٍ فَقَدْ مَدَى جُزْءٌ مِنْ يَوْمِهِ وَلَمْ يَنْوِهِ وَلَمْ يَسُمْهُ وَهِينَ إِذِنْ لَا يَصِحْ He says, Because the one who has not intended his fast إِلَّا بَعْدَ تُلُوَ الْفَجْرِ Until after the entrance of Fajr, 
even if it is by a very, very slight amount of time. Right? Even if it's by a very slight amount of time, listen. فَقَدْ مَدَى جُزْءٌ مِنْ يَوْمِهِ A portion of his day has passed without the intention. طيب? If a portion of his day has, fa- has, has passed without the intention, لَمْ يَنْوِهِ وَلَمْ يَسُمْهُ That means he intended, that means he was not fasting. وَهِنَ إِذِنْ لَا يصح. At that time, it is not considered to be valid. It is not considered to be valid based upon this hadith. وَعَلَيْهِ فَيَكُونُ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ وَإِنْ كَانَ فِيهِ خِلَافِ رَفْئِهِ وَوَقْفِهِ And of course we're talking about, we're not going to mention too much about this, but we know that there is difference of opinion concerning this hadith, whether it is marfu' or whether it is mawkuf. Meaning that it stopped, the chain stopped at, um, at, at Hafsa, or does the chain go back to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also for the benefits of this hadith, is the statement of at darakutni benefit of the next statement in which darakutni he said la siyama liman lam yafridhu min al-layl that there is no siyam this is another statement no siyam for the one who does not during the night time and he have the intention that he's making a an a an obligatory fast the next day right what is taken from this of the statement of of the hadith of at darakutni إشارة إلى أن المراد بذلك السيام الواجب هو الذي يفرد. The meaning of the hadith of al darakutni is talking about the fast that is an obligation because it is that which has been made فرد لم يفرد. طيب. He says أما التطوع فإنه وإن ابتدأ الإنسان فله أن يفطر أن يفطر كما سيأتي. As for if it was a voluntary fast, then the person can do what when he's fasting voluntarily? He can break his fast. But there's something connected to this though, not just any voluntary fast. Right? At tatawwa, not just any tatawwa, it has to be something, and we'll get to that inshallah ta'ala. But in general, if the person is making a voluntary fast and he begins the fast, he can break it. Or if he is going to fast an optional fast and it is past Fajr and it is at noon and he has not eaten yet he has not done anything he can begin an optional fast right an optional fast طيب. from the benefits of this hadith also of the darakutni wujubu niyya fi siyam the obligation of making niyya in the siyam طيب. this is a very important point mentioned in this hadith alladhi yu'tabar because that which is taken in consideration in this hadith is that tremendous pillar from amongst the pillars of the Sharia, and it is the statement in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab, Afwan, إِنَّمَا الْأَمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Indeed, actions are based upon intentions. Secondly, أَنَّهُ لَا بُدَّ أَن تَكُونَ النِّيَّةَ قَبْلَ تُلُوءِ الْفَجْرِ And also we know that it is important that the niyyah must be before fajr. Tayyip before Fajr. Also from the benefits is This is a very important principle in Islam. That whatever and whatever of an action of an of a deed that will not be considered to be a complete action or deed, or the ibad is not complete, except by the requirement of something else that is needed. Then that thing becomes wajib. If thing becomes wajib, you understand? If something is wajib, mala yutimu al wajib illa bihi fa huwa wajib. Whatever an obligatory act cannot be established except by way of this thing, then that thing becomes wajib. All right? And even sometimes some things can become actions that are no. It is no command or no, and it is no command for you to do do. Deal with this? No, it's prohibition for you, right? But that thing can become wajib. Methala, buying a bottle of water. Is there any command that we have to buy a bottle of water? Any command? Is this from the the awama? Purchasing a bottle, purchasing water. Period. No. Is purchasing water a command from Allah Taala's messenger anyway? Right? 
What about the, the prohibition of purchasing water? Is there a prohibition of purchasing water? We're speaking in general, right? No. Then this becomes, purchasing water becomes mubah. Right? From the ahkam al-khamsa, mubah. It becomes that which is allowable. There is no command, you can't force no one to purchase water. Nor can you tell someone who purchases water that he cannot purchase water or sell water. But if he's in a situation where he has the means to purchase water and water is available and he needs to make wudu, then buying water becomes wajib. Buying water becomes wajib. If you own a home, right, and you have the to purchase water, there's no wells around, no bodies of water where you can go get natural water from. You're in the middle of a city or whatsoever, and you say, I'm not, I'm not buying, I'm not paying for a water bill. We don't have water in here, I'm not using water. You need water for tahara. You have money to get the water. You can afford to purchase the water. You can afford to have the water, you know, brought to you in some type of way. Then water becomes wajib upon you because tahara is wajib upon you, and whatever cannot be whatever an obligation cannot be established except by something else, then that other thing, that something else, becomes wajib. Right? So in this case, the fast cannot be established except by niya. The niya becomes wajib. Right? The niya becomes wajib. Establishing the niya before fajr becomes wajib because the fast cannot be established which is wajib except by establishing the intention before fajr establishing the intention before fajr becomes wajib and this is a very important principle because someone to tell you know when you get into arguments with people how are you going to tell me this is wajib with me yaqi? right because this is a principle brother you cannot have your obligation established except by way of this so now you have to do this you have to do this right tell you also from the benefits of this hadith If someone was to say The shaykh he says Hal yajuz An abtadi al-nafla Fi athna'i al-nahar Can I begin An optional prayer An optional fast of one In the middle of the day Can I Is it permissible for me Since you said that the niyyah Have to be made At night Before fajr Can I begin an optional fast In the middle of the day and we went back and we said earlier, فَلَا سِيَامَ لَهُ لَا نَفِي لِلْجِنْسِ لَا نَفِي لِلْجِنْسِ And that is going to cover what? All types of fasts. So how do we understand this? And then we mentioned up here, it is only talking about the obligatory fast and not at the total optional fast. How do we understand this? The Sheikh, he says, this is very important here too, brothers. إِنْ كَانَ النَّفْلُ مُعَيِّنًا فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَصِحْ إِلَّا مِنْ قَبْلِ تُلُوءِ الْفَجْرِ If the fast is a specific type of optional fast, because every optional action is not an optional action that is optional absolutely. Sometimes the optional action may be مُعَيِّنَ or يعني نافلة مُعَيِّنَ أو مُطْلَقَ Like the sunnah of Salat. Some of them are مُطْلَقَ Some of them are مُقَيِّدَ or مُعَيِّنَ Right? There's some optional prayers. There is no necessary. There is no necessary mandated time, amount, place whatsoever. But then there are other optional prayers where there's an amount that must be prayed, a particular time and a place, right? And a reason behind praying this prayer. You have to stick strictly to the Sunnah and the way the Prophet Sallam and the way that it should be done, right? Then there are other that it is after like praying, right? It's not a forbidden time. It's not a forbidden place. You're not connected to anything. I just feel like praying. Right? Can you pray? Of course you can pray. How many rakah do you have to pray? Is it only four? Is it two? Is it three? I mean, all together. Right? The sunnah, of course, we know to, to do methana, methana, two, two. But I mean, can I do 100? Huh? Can I do 100 in, in intervals of two? Of course I can. There's nothing restricting me from that. If I just want to pray. Tell you. So fasting is the same way. There's some fast in which I wake up today and it's uh, Wednesday. It's not A.M. will uh, be, right? It's not anything connected to anything else, right? It's not any kafar, it's not nothing. It's just, I just want to fast. Then you don't need to make the niyyah before fajr. Do you? 
But if it is, مثلاً, أيام البيض, the 13th, 14th, and the 15th of the month, of the month, which is specifically connected to the legislation, the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Now, this is a, a nafil that is mu'ayyin. It is a specific, specified type of fast in which now you have to make your intentions for that 13th, 14th, and the 15th. Right? You can't wake up in the middle of the day. Someone says, "You know, this is the 13th of Rajab, 14th of Rajab." You say, "Oh, I use it. For, oh, I'm going to fast." No. You have to make your intentions before. Tell you. Okay. He says, "Well, I would that you assume a hal in Sam and Aweli ha, what illa Sara saw him and Nisfu yam or Rubu yam has to be my yan we, but Kadalik al Ayamul Muayina. And of course, he says that a person must have the intention from the beginning of the day, otherwise. He will be a person who is considered to only have fast half of a day, a quarter of a day, or whatever it is according to what he had intended after the fact. Also, the various other different days. Every action is according to the specific days before Fajr. The other days, in the middle of the day he fasts, he'll be... He'll be Record his fasting, a portion of the day, half of the day, or whatever it may be. Specific days before Fajr. As for the just unrestricted days of fasting, the one wants to just fast, then they don't have to have the intention before Fajr. And this will come, inshallah ta'ala, in the next hadith. Even though the Shaykh says there is khilaf based upon. Some of these particular issues here. So we'll stop here, be Allah Ta'ala. Any questions? Very important point there, very important point. So what if you um you didn't you, somehow you didn't make the intention but you missed the suhoor and now you're into Fajr, it's like in Ramadan. So what happens there? If you do what? You, you didn't get to you didn't make your intention and you didn't get to suhoor. So you have to fast, right? Yeah, but not eating suhoor doesn't mean you didn't make intention. Okay. Once, especially when Ramadan is in. It's right. difficult for a person when Ramadan is in right. that the night before he has no intention to fast the next day. Whether he takes suhoor or not. Right. But what we mentioned that suhoor is a sign no, is of intention. Exactly. It's an action that shows that there's intention there. Right. The action in and of itself. Right. right? And this is where we got into the thing of talking about uttering intention, right. saying my intention, or... Being in doubt, did I make my intention? You took Sahur, you took it for some reason. You don't have to be in doubt, doubt brother. Right? So we was talking about there's not, no taklif. There's no taklif in this. There's no overwhelming burden that a person has to be so cautious and scared every night. I thought, no. When you get into the month, so it's from the beginning, throughout the rest of it, you have the intention. When you leave from Taraweeh, when you leave and go, you know that what you're doing the next day. Right? You in the, as we can say, in the spirit, so to speak. Right? For lack of better words. So you already into it. You know you're going to fast the next day, whether you make Sahur or you don't make Sahur. And sometimes, especially in these, these um, late, late nights now, long, long days in the summertime, it happens once in a while. That late night, you know? That late night, and it's difficult to go to sleep when you leave from Taraweeh and you get that one hour, two hour, next thing you know, you pop your eyes open and, you know, it's fudging. And you're like, oh, subhanAllah, I missed Sahur. You know, so, and it, and it happens sometimes. But the best thing is to try to do your best to, you know, to preserve your energy to the best of your ability, to preserve yourself, to, you know, be balanced, and to, you know what I mean, with regards to your food, your drink, everything that you're doing. Try to be balanced, to preserve yourself, and you, you know your ability so that you can do everything in a desired manner and not tire yourself out or put yourself in a position where you miss out on something because you have tired yourself out. During the day or out of the day. There's some people say, it's Ramadan, I am in the habit of exercising and running three miles every day. I don't change during the month of Ramadan. I keep my same routine. La akhi, this is not good. Right? This is, this is gulu, this is taklif. And also it is not taken into consideration that Ramadan is not like the days and nights of any day and night through the rest of the year. So this is the time when you should abandon that and do something that's more beneficial for you. 
the days and the times in which the good deeds are magnified and the evil deeds are mul- the good deeds are multiplied and the evil deeds are magnified. The smallest thing you do is multiply more in the month of Ramadan. So you want to waste your time running three miles? You want to waste this time and tire yourself out? No, you want to take the opportunity to do and change your routine. If you keep the same routine, then there's no significance for the month. And there's no, from you showing no importance that this is a different time of year. I don't do the same thing. All right? I don't eat the same way. I don't sleep the same way. I don't carry myself the same way during the day. There's, you know, I do different things. My routine changes so that I can be in a frame of mind that is Ramadan. If the routine don't change, it's going to be like any other day, any other month. Except for the fact that I'm not eating and at a certain time of night I eat, then I pray and I go to sleep. No, the days and the routine and the mentality and the program should change, even if it's just slightly. We all work, we all have responsibilities. There are many things we can't change, but if we could change that, if we could all just have off for Ramadan, that would just be good too, right? But of course, that is in the, that is in the utopia that is not here. هذا والله أعلم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم